This was unfortunately not the only obstacle that faced unplanned this weekend. TV networks actually refused to run their ads. And the TV networks that refused, Fox News thankfully said that they would. But all the other networks that they tried to get their ads on said that they would not. So Lifetime, Hallmark, USA Network, HGTV, Travel Channel, Cooking Channel, Lifetime, and the Food Network all refused. All of them. For whatever reason, they said that they did not want to air the ads of this movie Unplanned. And there's a couple different reasons. A couple of them gave different explanations. A few said that they would not rate it, uh, put it on the air because it's an R-rated film, which is a massive pain in the butt because based on what I've heard from people that have seen this movie, and again, I'm going to see it right after the show tonight, there's really no reason that this should be an R-rated film except for that one scene in the abortion clinic. And everything takes place on a monitor. It's showing the dismemberment of a child, which is a horrific thing. But at the same time, it's happening on a monitor. Now, here's the irony in all of this. I actually think that the R rating is probably not unjustified in and of itself. And what I mean by that is a movie that features a doctor, and I'll use that term very loosely here, a, a person going in and, sorry, I don't know why that's happening, uh, somebody actually going in and murdering a child on screen is very traumatic and probably should merit an R rating. But the Hollywood people don't even believe it's a person. And so they're in a catch-22 that if they gave it this R rating, the obvious, uh, the obvious thing that they are implying here is that the abortion is a violent, graphic, and traumatizing act enough to merit keeping anybody under the age of 17 out of the theaters. So the irony is they could either downplay it and say, okay, well, abortion's not an act of violence, and it's not something that's traumatic, and it's not something that's hard to watch, and it's just a clump of cells anyway, so it doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we'll just give it a PG rating, whatever. But they didn't want to do that because they knew that an R rating would deter, like we're seeing here, certain TV networks from running its ads, and also kind of keep teenagers out of it, and also make some Christians a little skeptical about going to see it, which is the core audience, of course. So in a ploy, I believe to hurt the movie, they gave it an R rating. But the irony is, if you're extrapolating it logically, what they are saying by giving this movie an R rating is that an abortion is a horrific thing to behold. And the truth is, they're exactly right on that. But anyway, if a network has a policy that we just don't run ads for our movies, it's kind of a pain in the butt because of the situation. But at least I understand the rule, and they're not, they're not specifically trying to hedge out this one movie because it has messages that they may disagree with. So at least I understand it from that perspective. However... There were a lot of these networks that didn't even offer that as an explanation. They said that it was, quote, the sensitive nature of the film. That came from Travel Channel, Cooking Channel, HGTV, Food Network, and Lifetime. They all said, well, it was sensitive, and that's the reason that we didn't want to run the ads. And it is just absolutely appalling to me that because of a, they don't like the political nature of the message that this movie is showing that they are willing to forego trailers for this movie. And here's the thing that I would also ask, and I'm not trying to start a boycott or anything like that, but if you think about it from that perspective, especially the channels that we just listed, a lot of them, Hallmark, Lifetime, HGTV, Cooking, Food, those tend to be networks that have a pretty strong family 
and Christian base of fans. I don't think it's a smart business idea to deny this particular ad specifically because of that, because there are going to be some people, and I'm not saying that you should or that it's immoral if you don't or anything like that. This is not a call to action. But I'm just saying that if I were in charge of those networks, I would seriously reconsider that because I know that my audience may not be too pleased with me, since they are my core audience, after not showing just the ad for a movie that they may go to when they find out that you specifically didn't want that movie's ads on your television station. That to me seems like a very risky business proposition. But anyway, we saw actually the same thing happen with the movie Gosnell. You'll remember that Gosnell was about the, I mean, just the absolute horror show that was going on in the Kermit Gosnell abortion clinic, the one that he ran. And because of that, and because that movie showed sort of the, the really dark underbelly of the abortion industry, there were a lot of programs, there were a lot of TV stations that wouldn't run their ads either. And so you do have TV stations, which they're a private, they're a private company, they have the right to do it if they want to, but it seems to me unwise for them to do so. And we saw the same thing happen with that movie as well. However, there is great news. Despite all these roadblocks, despite having the deck stacked against them, this movie way exceeded at expectations for opening weekend. They were guessing, based on their estimates, that you're probably going to see about $3 million out of this movie. They were expecting to make $3 million. What they actually made was $6.1 million. So more than double what they were expecting to see on opening weekend. And it became the number five movie in America behind Dumbo, Us, Captain Marvel, and Five Feet Apart. Now, number five doesn't seem like a huge deal. But you have to keep in mind what it's up against here. This movie, Unplanned, had a $6 million budget which, by the way, means that they have already, on their first opening weekend, turned a profit because they made $6.1 million. So from now on, everything they make is profit. They've already covered their costs, and now it's just time to make profit. And so really good news for them. But when you look at its budget compared to some of the other movies, for example, Dumbo had a $170 million budget. $170 million. That is 28 times the $6 million budget of Unplanned. Captain Marvel, $152 million, 25 times the budget of Unplanned. And yet, I mean, it's not exactly close. It's not exactly like Unplanned almost beat those movies. But what I'm saying is you have to keep in mind that it's, it's going up against a movie with way more budget than it ever thought about having. And here's another thing you also have to consider. Not only is money a factor in this, and not only is it a factor that Twitter was trying to delete their account, and you had TV stations that refused to run advertising for it, so it was only advertised on one channel in the entire country. Here's something else to consider. The number of theaters that were carrying the movie in the first place because that makes a pretty big difference. So to compare, Unplanned was featured in 1,059 theaters this weekend, one of them being the AMC right here in Montgomery where I'm going to see the film. Dumbo was featured in 4,259, four times, four times the amount of theaters. And... Uh, it also beat out, Captain Marvel had about four times as many. And then you also had Wonder Park, who actually finished behind Unplanned, didn't make quite as much money as Unplanned did. And it was featured in 3,304 theaters. So over three times the amount of theaters that Unplanned was featured in, and yet Unplanned still beat it. With a lower budget, with less theaters, it still made more money. So this is actually really encouraging that despite everything stacked against it, despite everybody trying to quash this film, it's having an impact and a lot of people are going to see it. 
And I think that this does say something too. There are a lot of times that we see in the biblical narrative, God does really, truly amazing things with very little. And usually when the deck is stacked against him and stacked against his people. And I really do believe that this is yet another example of this. I mean, the God that can take down the most powerful nation on earth with one guy and a stick in the form of Moses and his staff, he can make a movie do better. And I do hope that this movie changes the hearts and minds of those that go to see it. And I'm praying for this movie and I'm asking you to pray for this movie as well because I think that it can have enough impact on people that maybe we can start turning this around. It's been trending down for a while. The pro-life movement has had amazing gains since really about 1992, 1993, but it's been slow and it's been very gradual. Maybe this movie makes it into a tidal wave. I don't know. But I know that God is going to hold us accountable for what we do. And I'm really praying that this movie might start changing everything around for this country. So please pray for this movie. Pray for its success. Pray for movies like it that promote a pro-life, pro-God message to continue to be made. And go see the movie. Maybe go see it even a couple times if you want to. Because we really do need to support efforts like this. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus. But I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.